Hi, George Pradle here with Vision Core. I'm the Director of Strategic Alliances, and today I want to talk to you about the differences between file level backup and image level backup. I think there's a lot of confusion, and what most folks have done in a legacy mode is that you've had file level backup for quite a long time. And so as you take a look at virtual machines and trying to bring virtualized environments into your corporation, there's some different strategies that you can use now that you just couldn't use before. So today we'll be looking at what actually makes up a whole file-based backup, what makes an image-based backup, and can we use these two together? And the answer is yes, and I'll show you in just a few minutes. So one of the things that we want to do is that if you take a look at what your server looks like in the back room here, it's, it's probably a rack mount, it's probably not a desktop like this, but let's take a look at what's actually inside of that machine. If we take a look at this and we pull off the cover as it were, basically you've got your basic machine which has a BIOS in it. And so your basic computer starts out with that and then what do we do? We sit around, we take some time, we load up an operating system on top of that. On top of the operating system, we put our applications. And then finally, on top of the applications, we've got our data. You're saying, George, I learned this a long time ago. Why do we need to go over this again? Well, the reason for that is because we need to understand exactly which layers of that server are actually being touched when we do a file level backup or an image level backup. So first, let's talk about file level backups. File level backups have been around for quite a long time. And what's nice about them is that you put an agent within the, the server, and that agent then talks to a media server. So we'll just draw a media server here. And either it's connected to a virtual tape library, or perhaps it takes it off to a tape drive. Tape drives kind of go back to uh, when I first started in the IT business. And basically, you know, you have the ability then to take those off site, create your disaster recovery and such. So what typically happens in a um, file level backup is that you're typically backing up mainly your data. That data is one thing that you need to be able to restore in order to get maybe your latest uh, SQL database back, some files, etc. And I think in most cases, if you know your if your backup is uh, anything like the ones that I've seen, is that typically it's file level backups for the CTO's secretary, you need to get that one file back, that spreadsheet that accidentally got deleted. That's typically the, the main thing. But when we look at this in, in the uh, context of disaster recovery, one of the things that we look at is just having the data is okay, but what does your disaster recovery plan look like then? So if we've got all these things here, yes, you can back up the files that make up the applications. You can back up the files that make up the operating system. But when we look at restores, which is the reason why we back up in the first place, right? Well, if we take a look at all this, what actually is the process that we would have to do in order to be able to get all of this system back up? Say, smoking crater, we lose that server, or in most situations, maybe someone accidentally deleted the server, or the server hardware went bad, that type of thing. So in order to do this, what we normally would do is you create a virtual machine. You could create this via a template, et cetera, but one of the things that you have to do that's very time consuming if you do file level backups is that you bring this back, you install the operating system. Again, this could actually be done in a template. Um, and then you install your applications. And that all could be done in a template. But one of the things that I've seen in a lot of environments, and maybe yours is different, but the way that the BIOS, the operating system, the applications go, you've got templates that can actually restore to this period. But a lot of times you do some tweaking. You do registry tweaks. Uh, maybe you've made some additions to files, different sets in that. So what would be nice is to be able to bring back all that as one. And guess what? It'd be nice to also bring that data in too, wouldn't it? Well, that's where image level backups come in. With image level backups, what we do is that we can actually take all this whole image here. And so what we want to do is kind of describe it like this. It's all as one piece instead of being all little separate pieces. We're going to take this whole image and we're going to take this off to a data source. And that way, what we can do is that at any point in time, we can pull that image back. Now, there's other methodologies which you can actually do differentials to that image. You can do incrementals just the same way as you do on your file level backups. So one of the things that's nice about this, though, is let's take a look at a restore scenario 
when you've got a situation where you've uh, lost your whole server and either someone's deleted it or smoking crater type of situation. Or there's a couple other scenarios that I'll give you in just a second because I think it's pretty important. So what you would do is you would go to your tool, you would take the image, you would restore that image um, onto the virtual environment that you want to run on, and then you can actually boot up that virtual image. So in a matter of speaking, it's very simple to do because you're bringing that whole system back. Because remember, that server pretty much comes down to a set of flat files. And so once you have that set of flat files back on the system, you can boot the system up. Maybe you make some modifications as far as IP addressing, et cetera. If the server is exactly the same, then you're still good to go. Now, one of the things that I've been asked about is the fact that, you know, sometimes people will say, well, I already have file level backup in place, and I would like to continue to use that for some of my servers, but maybe not all of them. And so is there a way that I could combine the two together? Well, actually, there is is that you could actually do, we call it the one-two punch, is that you could take an image level backup, and then remember that image level backup, what else is in that image? Well, the backup agent, right? So the backup agent, if you're using file level backups, is gonna be in here, and then that's going to connect back to the media server, where you can pull data off of your tapes or off of your VTL, and then that's gonna be able to freshen up your image very quickly. So there's a couple of things that I'm going to guess are happening in your environment that you know perhaps don't get looked at on a daily basis. And one of them is the fact that this server here, file level backups require that you buy an agent. And so one of the problems with that is the fact that those agents can be costly. Um, however, you know the fact is that you've got test and dev servers that have taken you a long time to build, right? And the problem is those servers aren't being protected. Why? Because of the fact that you can't afford to put that file level agent within that test dev box. So what you want to do is come up with a solution where you could get that whole image level back and then be able to do it in a very cost-effective manner. And we've got some tools that can help with that. Now some of the other um, scenarios that you may not think of that you would have, what's cool about having this you know, whole set of flat files here that we can move is the fact that I can take an image of that and I can take this whole set of files, being the BIOS operating system, whole shot and to back up that image. What if you've got a system that, let's say one of your applications is causing you problems and you call the vendor and the vendor says, yeah, you know what, that is a problem. Um, we've got a patch for that though and you know, we want you to try out the patch. Well, how many of you are actually comfortable applying that patch right to your production system? Here's the thought. What if you could take an image level backup of that patch and then take that off to another server, bring that up on another server and then once you bring it up, apply your patches and see how things work. Did the patch blow up the system? Is the patch okay? Once you're comfortable with it, then what you can do is you can apply the patch back to your production system. So this gives you another way to be able to take this information and be able to use it very, very easily. Um, a final thing I wanted to bring up is the fact that when you've got all this data like this, it's extremely portable. Now, one of the things that you can do with this, if you're a small, medium-sized business, there is no excuse for not backing up your environment at this point, none. Because the fact is, you can take this off, you can take it to a data repository. That data repository, it could be a SAN environment, it could be an array-based environment, but you know what? It could be a USB drive. And at as cheap as those things are these days, you know, really, what, you know, how much is your data worth? And so you have the ability then to bring that back. And the other thing is that if you want to take this out to a DR site, you bring up the base virtualized system, and then at that DR site, you can restore that whole system right there. So it gives it really easily to bring it back up. You know, compare that to the old days when basically you had this whole system where if you had a problem, okay, we go out, we buy another server, right? You know, four to six weeks to rack, stack, and deploy. And then we start the arduous process of going and doing the operating system. And then we've got all the applications and we try to make those tweaks as best as we can. And then finally we can get to the point where we restore the data. So if you think about the two processes, the ability to get back up and running as quickly as possible. If you're looking at RTO and RPO, your recovery time objectives and your recovery point objectives, I think the things that we've shown you today can give you some ideas about how you might be able to take advantage of image level backups and image level restores in your environment to make a better disaster recovery plan 
at a less expensive cost.